and welcome to Sue Finley Designs. Today's video is on how I created this piece. Just let me get a bit closer. Now for the background in here, I don't know whether you can see that at all, I've used foil. Um, this is actually smooth on the over the top of the foil. So I've used foil now it's not really picking up the colours very well because this is actually quite green but it's showing it as being quite blue. Then for around the edges here I've used acrylic diamonds which are just um, diamond shaped gems that, that can be used as table scatters or confetti and you can get those on Amazon and various places like that. In the centre, I don't know whether you can see that there, so I've used acrylic shapes. So these are same as the diamonds but they're slightly larger and um, different shapes so they're misshapen so they create good effects. Around it you can see, you see the sparkle there, there's some crushed glass happening. And then on the outside I've got um, Stormy Seas resin which I've then put some white over the top. Now this Stormy Seas is from Colour Obsession and the white is from La Res, which is Angel White. Now these two work really well together to create cells when applying heat. You'll see that in the video. So without further ado, let's get into the video on how I created this piece. As always, I started out with priming the board with wood primer. I do normally use a waterproof um, primer but I didn't have that in stock so I just used a regular white wood primer and this has got two coats front and back now this just is to prevent any warping um, and moisture getting into the MDF boards and then um, using some aluminium foil I've just crunched that up to give it some creases in there so that we can get some light refre reflections through the resin and then I'm just creasing the edges a little bit more where it's going to overlap slightly. So um, I've just placed it on the board to just see where I'm going to have that happening. And now I'm going to sketch out the layout of how I want the foil. Now when I start gluing this with some PVA glue, I actually stood back and felt it needed a little bit more glue around the edge. So you'll see that I do actually go past the lines and take it out further but the lines are just there for a guide so just so that I've got an idea on where the foil is going to be sticking down. Now I had a lady ask me why I'm gluing the foil down first um, and the reason for that is is because I'm using two strips of foil because I didn't have foil wide enough that when I glue it down um, I can get it positioned but also because this I want to rip the edges of the foil I'm just gluing down the shape and once this is dry it makes it easier then to remove the foil the excess foil from the edge so I'm just using some pressure to just glue that foil down Now in previous projects I have used resin to glue the foil down but that's because the foil that I was using was covering the whole board but because I'm only covering part of the board I feel it's better to just glue it down first and then I've got more control over how it's looking and I can adjust it as I'm going and then I'll just leave that to dry um, for a few days because the glue underneath takes a little bit longer obviously because the air can't get to the uh, under the foil so I'd, I'll leave this for about three days to dry before coming back and trimming off the excess. And I'm using any torn bits to cover areas that um, the foil didn't reach and also where I've torn some of the excess off here in the centre I've got some places where a bit of the white board is shown so I'll glue down some extra foil in the centre also. So this has been left to dry for about three days and so now I'm just trimming off the excess um, and just shaping it as I go. It doesn't have to be perfect 
when you're ripping this off because we are going to cover it in acrylic diamonds and um, you won't actually see the edges but it's just to give you the general shape to follow when we're putting the um, other elements in place. I decided to keep the excess pieces as well because I thought I may well use that in another art project so I'm just saving the little bits of um, foil in a bag for use at a later date. I may not use it, it's just it's there if I need to. And that's basically the, the first stage done. Now it's time to give the background uh, a colour. Now although I'm doing navy for the background colour I'm just painting this black and I'm going to um, paint the sides black so that way when the resin runs off I don't have a white tinge on the sides so by giving it a dark base colour it means that the resin will be nice um, and have a nice deep colour as well so I'm just going to go around do the edges and then come back with a roller to just do the bulk of this now it only needs one coat of paint and I'm just using global acrylic paints for the background colour and it doesn't have to be perfect like I said because it's going to be covered in resin but it just gives you the definition between the silver and the background colour I find that painting the background a similar colour to your resin helps when it comes to pouring the resin um, particularly over the sides. When you first pour resin it's quite runny so when it runs over the sides it's actually quite thin. Now you can wait for resin to thicken up a little bit before you allow it to run over the sides but I think by having the sides painted in a similar colour actually helps with that process so you don't, you, it's not as noticeable if it is quite thin. So it's the next day um, after painting the background and now it's time for the resin So pouring some of the acrylic diamonds onto a plastic plate I can now tint them with a little touch of India ink in the resin and use them to create a mound of gems around the edge of the foil. By doing it this way and mixing the resin with the gems I can actually create a barrier between the two colours so this helps prevent the colours running into each other this is ideal if you're doing geodes and things and you're trying to keep the colours from mixing together by creating barriers of stones and, and various bits and pieces like that it makes it a little bit easier to work with the colours So this whole process from start to finish with the resin pouring took me about an hour to do. So you don't want to be mixing all of your resin in one go. So this board I calculated to be about 1.5 litres of resin. However you don't want to be pouring and mixing 1.5 litres of resin in one go. So I, I tend to do this in batches. So the first cupful there, that's about um, 400 ml of resin that I've poured and mixed into the cup. And then I've gone back and mixed some more. As you can see, I'm, I'm applying it in batches and just moving that around with my hand. This gives me more time to work in between pours. So now I'm not stressing over getting the pour done quickly because I know that the, the resin could be curing rapidly in the cup. So by just doing this in stages. So I'll do three lots of 400 and then add... Uh, and mix up a little bit more if I need to at the end, I'll just assess at the end. So this middle section you see I've poured a slightly darker blue down the centre and I'm just using my fingers to gently blend the two together without overworking it. So to do that I just dabble my fingers across the two colours just to give it a slightly darker look in the centre but give it a more natural feel. 
and now um, moving to the outside this is the stormy seas now again like I say I'm mixing it in batches so I'm just gonna let that come out of that cup and then I'll go and mix up some more now note I'm just using the same cup throughout because I started off with a very pale colour and then I've gone slightly darker each stage I can use the same cup over and over again so so this works quite well when you're doing um, the same colours I will mix it in the white in a clean cup though because obviously I don't want any tint of blue in there but um, yeah so that, that works well for doing that I'm just using my fingers I'm just moving it around and assessing whether I need to mix up any more blue thankfully I don't there was um, the 1.2 litres was enough to cover this board so I'm just going to mix up a tiny amount now for the white for the next stage and always using the heat gun to zap bubbles as I go now this white is angel white from the res this is white is very very good for creating cells and lacing because it's very very dense and using it with other brands of pastes and pigments and things you get really good effects now I tend to work with not the same brand in the same um, project because I like to get different effects happening so if you use different brands of pigment and paste in the same project you can you've got your more chance of achieving cells and lacing but this white on its own is fantastic and all I'm doing here is applying heat to um, moving it to help the cells happen and then just adding a bit more white where I feel it's a bit lacking and just needs a little bit more going on there and then I'll just let the resin move and do its thing itself For the centre I felt it needed a little something else so I decided to use the acrylic sh shapes in the centre. Now these are slightly larger than the acrylic diamonds and they are um, not in the shape of diamonds, they're actually, um, I wouldn't even know what you called them, they're just misshapes and they create really good effects in the resin also. And then around the outside to add a little bit of extra sparkle I'm just putting some clear crushed glass around the edges of the, the shapes in the centre and around the edges of the foil just to give that extra bounce and sparkle. Now you don't really see it that well in the video but this piece does actually um, shimmer and sparkle like you wouldn't believe when you see it. It's actually turned out really really well and I'm a bit disappointed that the video doesn't show how well it looks but it's turned out fantastic. Now if you want to see this piece, it's actually going to be um, on show at my winter art sale and show in Perth next weekend, the 28th to the 30th of June 2019. Um, it's going to be on show there. And so if you're in Perth and you want to go, come and see this piece, which I think it's, you should do, you should come and see it, it's my favourite so far, then please do come down and say hello. It's... Um, I'll put the information in the description below so that you can come and have a look if you so want to. As always, thank you to everyone who has purchased my ebook. Sales of the book help go towards funding these videos, so for that I'm very grateful. You'll find a link to the book in the description below. Also, if you like this video and would like to see more resin ideas, then please subscribe to my channel or better still go and browse my other videos. I have plenty of ideas to keep you inspired. So until the next video, see you soon. Bye now.